Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we have gathered here this morning to give you thanks for all we have received from you, to praise your holy name, to acknowledge and confess our sins, to hear your holy word, and to ask for your blessings we need for a life pleasing and near to you. Almighty God, we are in awe of your magnificent power displayed through the entire universe. For through you, all things were made and all things have their being. We come before you with grateful thanks and with hearts that adore you and worship only you. As we worship you today, O Lord, in all humility, we celebrate your infinite love, goodness, and mercy by praying the holy prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning and Happy New Year. And Esther, I just wanted to say we had the blessing that you encouraged Barry with uh, Mary Did You Know, and he did a splendid job on Christmas Eve with that. And uh, were you able to see it on TV? Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm so glad that you're able to experience that, and Barry did a great job with that song. We have one addition to our prayer concerns this morning, and that is Amy Real Hempful. Uh, this comes from Gail Conradi, and uh, she will be entering into hospice uh, due to cancer. And uh, please remember Amy in your prayers this week. And, uh, and her family. Brothers and sisters, I place these concerns before Christ at his table. And let us continue to prepare our hearts for a moment of prayer by the singing of our prayer hymn. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. As we gather in this sacred place, O God, we turn hoping to hear you again speaking into our souls. 
We have spent far too much time wandering and disoriented and unsure of our purposes in this world. And there is a deep desire within us, the desire to live with purpose and passion. So God of the whisper, so often you take a back seat in the table of our lives, waiting for the invitation to come closer. So in worship, we reach out with willing spirits, waiting with a sense of anxious anticipation to actually feel your presence, hoping that we might also be able to hear your voice. And so we wait. Oh God, we bring before you now our silent prayers, but also a listening heart. Hear us, O oh God. Oh God, we also gather up our concerns, our own stumbling blocks, our worries over loved ones, our burdens over our world and its challenges. Help us to discern that which we are powerless to change, but also to give us the boldness to risk changing the things that we can change. Help us to pay attention to the attitudes that keep us from you and from others. And help us to turn to you, trusting that you will help us through the, our own soul sickness to a new hope for a deeper life with you. And grant us spirits that seek to serve in your world. O oh Lord, that we might make you glad today. And guide us that we might venture into our world with courage in the journey you have entrusted us with. This is our prayer to the Holy One of God, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. For our stewardship moment this morning, I want to give a quote from James L. Kraft, the Canadian-American businessman and inventor. He served as the president of J. L. Kraft and Brothers Company, which later became Kraft Foods Incorporated. Probably most of us have eaten some of their products at one time or another. Here is one of his famous quotes. The only investment I ever made has paid consistently increasing dividends is the money I have given to the Lord. End quote. Perhaps many of us here today have been able to say these same words.
us pray. O Lord, giver of life and source of freedom, we know that all we have is received from your hand. Gracious and loving God, you call us to be stewards of your abundance, the caretakers of all you have entrusted to us. Please help us always to use your gifts wisely and teach us to share them generously. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Jerusalem. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the, that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Robert Frost has uh, a poem that my uh, Old Testament professor at Christian Theological, Theological Seminary always had in his syllabus where he wanted us to hear these words and uh, live by these words. You know it. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged into a wood. And I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. The road less traveled. Well, here in the first Sunday in 2023, can you believe it, 2023, we join other churches across the world as on the Sunday after Christmas, the crowds aren't quite as big as they were on Christmas Eve. Just like the crowds go home or stay home, but like wise men from the east, you, you have come to worship the newborn king. You're here. God led you here, and you're offering your worship to him 
as a way to begin the new year. This is a text from this ancient visit of royalty that I want us to ponder today. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road, a road less traveled. What would it mean for you and me to take the road less traveled in 2023? Well, let's consider the road of discernment. Scripture says, and having been warned in a dream. It's been said that dreams are a window into the soul. But what if they were also revelations to the future? You know, Jacob dreamed about a stairway to heaven, and upon awakening, exclaimed, Surely the Lord, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Solomon had a dream that the Lord would give him a discerning heart. And on the day of Pentecost, Peter, taking his text from the prophet Joel, said, The Spirit will be poured out on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. Melvin, that does not mean that you can sleep in church. No. What hopes and dreams dance around in your head? What fantasies of a divine kind float through your mind? Maybe hoping for things that never were is more helpful for the future than crying about things that have never been. Of course, our hopes and our dreams must be interpreted, tried, tested on the anvils of scripture, reason, and discussion in a Bible study group. You see, some dreams are revelations from God, and others are the result of, like Scrooge, thinking that he ate some bad soup and had a nightmare. Dreams. There's a book written by Abraham Heschel that talks about the importance of dreams the prophetic spirit. And he begins this academic book by talking about the pathos of God, the feelings of God, about how God feels about this world. And that he has created a remnant of people whose hearts have been shaped to receive and to know God's feelings. And why does God do that? To rise up his remnant so that they may do the acts of God in God's world. The prophets. But Peter tells us that you and I are now capable through Christ and his Holy Spirit to feel the feelings of God so that we might do the acts of God in God's world. During our times of silence, some of you have said that you have a hard time just being silent because your mind starts racing about things. Maybe it's not your mind that's racing you. Maybe it is the Spirit of God trying to speak to you in silence during communion time or during our prayer time listen listen you might be feeling the feelings of God trying to move you to do the acts of God whether it's in your own life or for someone else just think about that that's a road less traveled consider the road of moral integrity 
It's been a while since it came out, but has anyone ever seen the movie The Nativity Story? Bummer. I'm not going to tell you the whole story because it's about a two-hour movie. But this movie's done a little di bit differently. You know, at the beginning of the movie, it opens with Herod's slaughter of the innocent the murder of the babies and toddlers. And to tell the truth, I wasn't ready for that. Could we just have the little Lord Jesus sleep on the hay? But then I thought about the movie and they started it off right because that's exactly the kind of world that Christ entered this dark world. He entered into a dark world. Herod would have made Hitler, and this is no hyperbole, look like a saint. He murdered his wife. He murdered his mother-in-law. He murdered three of his sons on top of murdering all these children because of his paranoia about his throne. Even Caesar Augustus, the Roman emperor, said this in the historical record. It was safer to be Herod's pig than Herod's son. On his deathbed, Herod ordered some of the most distinguished people in Jerusalem to be arrested and slaughtered at the moment of his death. So some tears would be shed. I don't think any tears would be shed at his death. So these wise men had to decide would they be part of the Herod problem or part of the solution? So do we. We're at the gate of a new year. We could pray, Lord, deliver us from pack thinking, peer pressures. Let us refuse to do it just because everybody else is doing it. Let's refuse. Most of us are content just to be people that go along with the crowd. But morality will never be determined by public opinion or a Twitter poll. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may be able to know the will of God. As you shape your thinking, what are the voices you're listening to? Think about it. Paul says, sit in silence, worship God, and let God shape your conscience, and do the actions of God in this world. Well, friends, here at the gate of a new year, we must decide. Will we just talk the talk or will we walk the walk? Integrity is kind of like the weather. Everybody talks about it. Not many people do anything about it. Last of all, the road of dynamic faith. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road, that road less traveled. They returned to their country without the benefit of a road map, or for that matter, even a road. There were no GPSs on the noses of their camels, and such is the nature of faith. The book of Hebrews says faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
the evidence of things not seen. And Paul writes in Romans, the righteous live by faith. But you know, are you like me? I'd rather live by sight. I like to know what's going on. I prefer to project what is going to happen. I like to know what's down the road. So if we don't plan our destination, how will we know if we've arrived? But God's made this world in such a way that life is not predictable. And many of you have gone through the school of hard knocks, and you know that's true. Life is not predictable. We don't always reap what we sow. Illness is like the weather. It's no respecter of persons. Jesus said it rains on the just and the unjust. I said to the one who stood at the gate of a new year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And God replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand in the hand of God. That shall be to you better than any light and safer than any known way. So I go on, not knowing how I would not, if I might. I would rather walk in the dark with God than walk alone in the light. I would rather walk with God by faith than walk alone by sight. Are you placing your hand in God into this new year? My friends, on the threshold of a brand new year, you and I must determine, by God's grace, to take that road less traveled. You know why? Because it'll make all the difference in God's world. Brothers and sisters, let us commit ourselves to God and the road of discipleship, which is the road less traveled. Please stand. As I said earlier, I invite you to take time of silence and listen this morning as you receive the communion.
and I'll be interested in what God speaks to your heart. Brothers and sisters, all are invited to this table. Let us go to the Lord and let us receive his grace. join me in prayer. Oh Lord, we come at this table to share with all Christians throughout the world the birth of your son. In this Christmas season, we do share the new beginning. Birth is a new beginning. And through your grace, death is a new beginning. We come grateful for the cup and the bread and for all that it represents, the life of our Savior Jesus Christ, which was given that we might have the joy of life abundant. Help us learn at this table to truly be one in love, forgiving one another as you have forgiven us. Help us to dwell in your word always and to live out your peace in our words, our witness in our work. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us remember that on the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took the loaf, 
He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same manner, he took the cup also, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, my blood shed for the sins of the world. Take and drink. Gracious God, we give you thanks, for at this table we hear your Son saying, our sins are forgiven so that we might have the power to forgive sins. You give us your spirit in the upper room, this place. May we be faithful in forgiving the sins of others that we might make this a new beginning. Oh God, we love you and we seek to be faithful in this new year. Brothers and sisters, may God give you dreams this year, and may you be faithful in your response. May we truly be the light of Christ in this dark world. Amen. Amen.